Well, the very common way of looking at how climate changes are measures such as temperature or rainfall change over different parts of the world. Uh, but more recently, uh, a sort of way of looking at climate change is the time of emergence, the time at which significant climate signals emerge from what we call the noise of variability, the variability generated by processes such as the El Nino Southern Oscillation, for instance, or variability in the Atlantic Ocean region. What we're looking at in this paper is what we call the emergence of different values of the signal to noise. We're looking at the signal of climate change in terms of temperature in different regions and by uh, looking at the climate signal by population rather just by great geographical regions. And we term these different climates uh, unusual climates, that is the sorts of climates that may appear once every decade or so in the last century, or unfamiliar climates, the sort of climate that may have been experienced, say, once in a human lifetime in the 20th century, or unknown climates. These are climates where the temperature change is so high that you're actually far beyond the range of natural variability in the region where you may have lived over the 20th century. A consequence of looking at climate in this way is that when you look at this measure by population, it actually shows how quite significant fractions of the world's population will experience large signal-to-noise emergence. They will experience these unknown climates. Even though the temperature change they experience is less than might be experienced in the Arctic, compared to the variability that people have seen in the past, this change is actually a very big deal. Your ability to adapt to climate change is going to be based a lot on the variability of climate you have experienced in the past in a certain location of the part, a certain part of the world. So that's why looking at the signal to noise, these climates, whether they're unusual, unfamiliar, unknown, is an important thing. And mitigating against climate change isn't just a question of lowering temperature change, lowering temperatures back to the level of, say, the pre-industrial or whatever, lowering carbon uh, emissions. We can look at it in terms of keeping climate more familiar for people. If you keep, keep the climate more familiar, you're more easily able to adapt to whatever climate change is happening. Many people alive today now, a lot of people alive today now, if they mitigate emissions now, might actually see the benefits of these lower emissions in terms of the signal to noise measure by the 2050s. So it's quite a powerful means of incentivizing people maybe. It's, uh, it's quite a powerful message to say your actions will affect your world that you will see in the future. You will be alive to see the benefits of mitigating lowering carbon emissions.